Hello guys. Well, we were all set for spring. And well, you can see, this 8 inch snow just ain't spring. So since the pantry shelf is empty where the pinto beans reside, we decided to stay inside and do some canning. Hope you enjoy the video. Hi there, I'm Carol from Micro Homesteaders. Today is a beautiful day out there. Yesterday we had a blizzard type storm that left us with six, maybe seven inches of snow. But boy, it is gorgeous. Everything is so white and beautiful. But the sun is shining all day and it's starting to melt. But you know, I thought this would be a perfect day to do a little canning. Uh, I'm out of uh, pint jars of pinto beans, so that's what I'm going to be canning for you today. Now, first I'm going to tell you that my method of canning doesn't uh, go with the ball cannon, but it works for me. Uh, and I use Morton pickling salt, which I've already put in the jars to save a little time. and for the pint jars, uh, we're going to put a half of cup of pinto beans, which I have looked and washed, and we're going to put them in the jars. I've already put the salt in, so we'll get this. And be sure you use the right amount. Okay, this is really an easy way to can your beans. And, and this is an easy way to get in and get out. Now, I'm gonna do that over. Oh yes, yes. I like the pint jars because they're really easy, you know, to open a can. And uh, for lunch, you don't want very many. I may just want to make some refried beans just for Merle and I's lunch. Okay, now we'll, uh, I'll add boiling water up to the rim. It takes no time at all to can these beans. Really, the processing is the most time that we'll use. I've got some more water back here. I hear that a lot of people are, are afraid of the pressure cooker. Uh, did you have that problem when you first started using a pressure cooker or? Well, in the very beginning, years ago, they didn't have the safety measure that they have today. So, you know, it takes the worry out of it. As long as you follow the directions that comes with your canner, you're good to go, right? Yeah, well, you have a little safety valve in your canner. And if it's going to blow up, that's 
plug's going to come out. So if I understand this right, way back in the old, old days, there was a chance that you could yeah. become harmed. Yes, you could burn yourself real bad. And probably, you know, a lot of girls remember that. But everything is so much safer today. I use a pressure cooker a lot. You're basically using, leaving, uh, what, an inch of headspace, right? Is that the right terminology? Yeah, I'd say. I usually come right up to the, to the rim and... To that first little ring? Yes. Okay. I think you got one on the end of the Ah, uh -huh. thank you. That's why I have you in here helping me. What we do would we do without our helpers? I'm what you call a good sidewalk superintendent. Yes. <laughs> okay, now my canner only holds seven jars, but I'm lucky I have two canners but I'm only going to run them one at a time. Always wipe the rim. You never know what might be on them and you don't want to lose a, a jar of beans. You want everything to seal up real nice. Okay. And I've sterilized my seals. I always sterilize my jars. They say that you don't have to because it's going to be in the pressure cooker for so long. But, you know, old habits die hard. So basically all you did was pour boiling water on your seals, right? Yes. Better safe than sorry, I guess. Oh, absolutely. You don't want those real tight, do you? No. Well, yeah, you. I tighten mine pretty good. Let me go ahead and put all of these on. Got enough done here for the first canner. Okay.
you've got about two inches of water in your can, is that correct? I put about three quarts of water. Uh, you'll, uh, you, whatever your book Direction. tells you, your directions tell you. So I got a tough question for you. Okay. So you're you're out at a yard sale and you see this really nice looking uh, uh, pressure cooker, but it doesn't have the directions with it. So I guess you could go home and look it up on the internet. Then. And, uh, sure, you could go online and uh, get all the information you need. Get all the information, and and they would probably you can order a book. You just want to be really careful that they're not damaged and that yes. the, the seal is with it. And right. Now, I have uh, already had this on, and the water is hot. So I'll go ahead and uh, and always uh, take your seal out and I rinse mine with hot water make sure that it's nice and uh, loose okay and then line it up with the arrow so do you occasionally <laughs> put some uh, oil or anything on your your seal too yes i do and that helps keep it uh, more or less like new? Yes. Keeps it from drying out. Okay, I'll finish these. And be ready for the next canner. Now I've turned that heat up and uh, when that starts to jiggle, then I'll time. And when it starts to jiggle, then you'll time it for 75 minutes. And that's all there is to it. Okay, we're back. Uh, the 75 minutes is up, and we've let the pressure go down. So now we'll take the lid off and always turn it away from you because that steam sometimes can really be hot not sometimes all the time okay Okay, now we'll take these out. And I know when I started, it looked like there wasn't going to be very many beans in there. But believe me, uh, after it cools off, it will swell up and you'll have a full jar of beans. Try to be careful not to knock those jars together because they're hot and they could break. And we sure don't want that to happen. I really like having these on hand, the little pints because you can just make so much stuff with them and it's just the right amount for two people and I also can them in quarts so if I need a bigger okay now 
that is really pretty. Thanks guys, and we hope you got something out of that. We, uh, we just happened to be out of beans and we had to can some, so since we're snowed in and, and can't do anything else, we, uh, we thought we just might as well make a video out of it. And I suspect we'll make another one tomorrow. So, yeah, be sure and uh, if you can, subscribe. And don't forget to ring that little bell up there so you get a notification. And uh, for me, Merle. And, and for Carol. And for Carol. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.